All right, so I managed to pick up a lot of some random older Pokemon knockoffs, so let's take a look at them. <laughs> I don't have any known Pokemon knockoff line that I can say that any of these guys particularly belong to as I just got them all loose like this and they're from a bunch of different ones. So if you saw my MMZ video on Pokemon cards, you know I had a bunch of somewhat questionable things like these. I'm still not 100% sure with these type of cards if they're actually licensed or not. These are very flimsy feeling cards and I kind of always thought they were stickers. Okay, these are actually stickers. I finally found that out for sure. These cards all have part of the story from one of the Pokemon anime episodes on the back with a little picture from it. As you can tell, these were made quite early on as it still calls it pocket monsters and also that these cards aren't cut consistently at all. But these cards do actually have copyright information for Nintendo Game Freak and such on here, which has always made it quite questionable to me whether these were legit or not. Maybe these were just made very cheaply for them by Bandai in 1998. One thing that's always struck me odd about these cards is you can have multiple ones with the same story on the back, but they'll all have different pictures on the front. And of course, there's some with pictures like this with the colors way off that just don't look like they'd be from a legit line at all. In this lot, I actually got a couple of these cards that are slightly different than any of the other ones I've ever seen. These ones do have the actual Pocket Monsters logo in the corner of them, and they also feature points about the same story which were shown on the front of the cards. But the particularly odd thing about these two is they're missing all the copyright info and the Bandai marking at the bottom. But at least they look better than this one. Seriously, what the hell happened there? We're tired of our motto, so we thought we'd try a song. I'm glad one of these cards has James's parents on them and that uh, his mother looks nothing like Jesse. That right there is the face of a man who just realizes he has a giant Oedipus complex. I mean, if you want to believe James is straight. So these two oddball cards say they were put out by a company called Cardass? Really? Okay, so Cardass was a part of Bandai at least, and they did actually make some pocket monster cards back when, some including the original 151 Pokemon, and I think some about the anime as well, but I still can't confirm whether or not these ones are legit or not. But I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that these aren't legit, and they never made sticker versions of these cards, and that these are just a couple different bootlegs of them and they decide to keep company logos on some and not on others. That's my best guess with these. If you don't like it, complain about it in the comments, which I'm sure none of you will do. But only the most legit Pokemon cards have weird stars with drawn on frowny and smiley faces on them. Legit or not, these Pokemon sticker things are pretty cool as I always appreciate things with the older Pokemon come on artwork on them like these. All right, so now here's a first for bootleg zones, knockoff pencils. The design on the actual pencil is everyone's favorite, Pikachu. And they also say pocket monsters in a kind of wacky font on them. But hey, the Pokemon on the top of these pencils are ones that don't get a whole lot of bootleg love. Krabby and Executor. Unfortunately, this isn't that wacky Aloha form Executor. You just gotta deal with this one having a long butt instead of a long neck. That's one doofy looking Krabby. Crab butt. <laughs> I do really like seeing some knockoff merchandise like this from Pokemon's initial boom period where they still put pocket monsters on a lot of it. Now while those sticker cards made me question their legitimacy since they actually had copyright Nintendo and such on them, these pencils don't, they just say China, but they do have a copyright attributed to some Chinese characters. Here's another new one for bootleg zones, a bootleg Pokemon watch. 
This watch has a clear strap that features pictures of zombie Pikachu down the sides. Though I'll hold out hope that eventually zombie Pikachu will be a real thing. The Pikachu in the middle of the actual watch though looks pretty legit, so you probably wouldn't notice that this wasn't a real Pokemon watch right off the bat. There is absolutely no marking for Nintendo or Game Freak on this watch, but it is water resistant. The only kind of company marking we get at all is down by the six on the watch where it says Tian Heo. I've tried looking them up, but I didn't find anything in relation to this. But oh yeah, at least I can be super styling now in my bootleg Pokemon watch where it's always eight after eight. I could probably get a battery for it. <laughs> the seller of this lot also gave me uh, these, which weren't originally a part of it, but apparently I needed more bang for my buck that I spent on this. Which, yeah, that's all I spent. It was a dollar, and then they gave me extras, so... That's nice. And uh, speaking of real things, a super detailed Charizard coming out of the flames here, you probably shouldn't be too surprised, is legit. It's also pretty damn new, I guess. But for a while there, it was a pretty tough call for me which of these two was the bootleg. But first, let's take a look at these darn Pikachus. You might remember bootlegs of these Pikachu molds back in the Prodigy Pet episode of Bootleg Zones. I swear, making knockoffs of these particular Pikachu toys had to be like your entry into Pokemon bootlegs back in the day. And we can see there is quite a little variation between just these two Pikachus based off the same mold, but they were definitely made by two different bootleggers here. They even did the eyes slightly differently and they blended the white better on this guy where it looks more like this Pikachu forgot to shave. However, one of these constipated shoes seems to have lost their tail somewhere down the line. The other three Pikachus I got in this lot are all the peace sign Pikachu and they've been modified into keychains, which makes them rather annoying to try and stand up. These two shoes look like they're made by most likely the same bootleggers. They look almost exactly the same, got the same type of keychain on them and got that exact same stayed up all night, forgot to shave look. And then there's this one that is the devil. Don't look into his eyes. His soulless black eyes. Also, he's kind of got that stupid little dingo pictures butt nose thing going on. <laughs> there's just so little paint detail put on this one and he even feels slightly cheaper than the other Pikachu keychains. And I do not believe for one second that that demon really means that peace sign. But hey, its keychain is a little bit longer, so it's got that bonus. Oh, no painting on the back. There's a shock. And they even went to the extra effort to be more lazy, if that makes any sense, by making the tail just a part of the back piece when it was separate on the actual toy and uh, these better bootleg keychains. The lazy demon Pikachu is the only one of the Pokemon little figurines in this lot that has any markings in the form of a sticker, which is the classic gold Made in China sticker, which says Made in Taiwan instead here. Well, what a twist. All right, but now on to the main event and the two figures that made me buy this $1 lot in the first place. The Pokey Abominations of Charizard and Dragonite. So, uh, yeah, a real Dragonite looks just a little different than this doofy-faced freak. Just, uh, really, why? Why? No detailing on the back, but at least they did paint his horns black all the way around, which they shouldn't be. And then we got, I don't know, I guess, Aerodactyl colored Charizard. Someone probably messed up on which Pokemon they're supposed to be working on here. 
Best case scenario is you can say it's a shiny black Charizard, but I'm pretty sure these were around during the first generation when that wasn't a thing. And uh, yeah, no idea what's with the like clown shoes claws. And looking at the back, you can see a whole lot of nothing except the scenes where they glued these two pieces of plastic together to make this guy. So yeah, these are two hollow pieces of crap, but they are amazing in their ineptness. I'd seen pictures of these two doofuses a long while ago, so it makes me happy I finally got these two stupid things to show on the show. This one is kind of weird to score as it's a bunch of different crap, but I'll do it anyway. The sticker cards are a bit sloppy with how they are cut sometimes, but for the most part look pretty nice. The pencils aren't overly off and honestly could pass as something legit if they had proper trademarking on it instead of whatever that is, and the same could pretty much go for the watch, save for Zombie Pikachu. Now I always love doofy painted Pokemon knockoffs, and while all the Pikachus are a little off, some of them get fairly close, except for the laziest painted one who stares into your soul. The best of the worst was the way off model Dragonite who looks like a rejected Muppet and the Aerodactazar the Pokemon who doesn't quite know who it is. Five. We've got things that are either straight up rip-offs of the real things, or they didn't think too far outside the box when it came to using the bootlegamons for their new products. The Dragonite and Charadactyl were most likely their own molds, and you can see how well that turned out. I do like the bootleggers at least making those over knocked off Pikachu molds into keychains and Krabby and Executor pencils. And even though there's always that joke about bootleg watches on a lot of things, this is the first time I've actually covered one. But of course, those two hollow bozos are the stars of the weirdness with their horrid paint detailing. Seven. I have no package and I'm a scream zero. Most of these figurines would be a mean replacement, but the pencils are probably fine and maybe that watch. Uh, the best thing is probably those sticker cards, especially because you weren't likely to see the real versions of those over this way. Six. And the bootleg zones overall is seven! It's an uneven lot, but I do really like some of these Pokemon knockoffs, and finally having gotten some of the original, extremely doofy looking fake Pokemon. <laughs> Alright, Doofy Muppet Dragonite, I challenge you to a Pokemon battle. Okay, I choose you, Longbutt Krabby. In that case, I choose you, Pencil Butt Executor. Pencil Butt Krabby, use Pencil Butt Attack. Counter that Executor with Pencil Butt Attack. Return! Return! Well, that sucked! Uh, yup! No! Shit at you! In that case, I'll use Shit at you! Quick, Shit at you! Use Don't Fall Over Attack! It's super effective! In that case, use Don't Fall Over Attack, Shit at you! Oops! Not very effective. Haha! <laughs> Looks like I win this round or something. Screw you! I'm gonna use two of my pizza chews! Well, I only got one of those, but it happens to be a demon. You fools have wasted your time sitting around here playing games. Your souls now all belong to me. Uh, oops. 
Yeah, I think we made a little mistake here. Um, well, I got one more Pokemon left, a, a real Charizard. We can see how that goes. So, uh, real Charizard, you oh, yeah. I will be back at the greater numbers. <laughs> this stupid stuff.